So now in this video, we're going to look at the 74-126 integrated circuit. Last video was a 74-125 integrated circuit, and the vast majority of the sheet here looked the same. I mostly copied it, but I had to make a few changes. So for the 74-125, we had an OE low. Now we got the OE high for the uh, 126. And uh, so we had some bars over some of the other stuff, and we had a little dot. To indicate we had an inverted signal there but now those are all gone because now we have the output enable pin high for our normal buffer state so we got quadruple here there's four integrated circuits on here four gates and we're going to use the 74 hc 126 for high speed cmos right there high for this circuit is going to be five volts low is going to be zero volts so it's digital. That's generally what you should work with when you use these integrated circuits, five volts at the power supply. And then ground is zero volts. The high speed CMOS version, you can vary that a bit. But in any case, always check the data sheet to see the voltages you can use. But uh, we're just gonna stick with five right here. And uh, so that's common. And all of these should pretty much work just fine with five volts. So now we have the uh, symbol right there and we need the output enable to be high, so we're going to need close to 5 volts. And uh, you can actually get near about halfway, but as long as you're closer to 5 volts than 0 volts for the most part, you got a high signal there. And when you do, if you have a high input close to 5 volts, you'll have high output. If you have a low input close to 0 volts, you'll have about 0 volts at the output. Now, if you give a low signal to the output enable pin right there that just basically disconnects the output it can't sync or source current it's not 5 volts or 0 volts it's just tons of impedance resistance basically so any circuitry doesn't see the power supply at all when it comes to the output basically it's like it doesn't exist it's like an off switch so here's the true table you can see for the uh, 126 remember the 125 was the opposite you needed a low, low, and high there for the results here. Now we have high output enable pin. Means that a high input will be a high output. And with a high output enable pin, a low input is a low output. But if you have a low output enable pin for the 126, doesn't matter, high or low, that's what that X means, you will have a high impedance state right there where the output's just basically like an off switch, not connected to anything. So now we'll look at the actual integrated circuit on the breadboard. First we'll look at the right side. We have to power it. So pin number 14 here to the positive supply and uh, pin 7 down at the bottom we'll see over there is to a ground. So we got 5 volts across there and we have right below that the output enable pin for one of the op amps. So you'll see with all of the output enable pins I have them to ground because as we saw before other than the one that we're using. As we saw before, that disables the output right there. And also, when you have any unused input with these integrated circuits, you wanna tie it to the positive or the supply rail right there. So we're just gonna go positive. Doesn't really matter which one too much. So in any case, that's why we have the right side the way we do. We'll come to the LEDs in a little bit. So now we will uh, look at the other side of the integrated circuit. We are using just this top part, uh, this top gate right there. We're not using that one, so again, we tied the pins. We have ground though, as I said before. Pin number seven, that's a power supply pin. We need that one. So we have the output enable right there, and we're done with the, the sheet there. Right below that, we have the input. So that's a trim pot. We can set the voltage all the way to five volts, all the way down to zero volts, or uh, anywhere in between. So it's pretty close to five volts right there. And then we have the output. That's that jumper going to these LEDs. You can see they're going to the red LEDs right now. And if I turn the uh, trim pot, the current's flowing through the red LEDs, not the blue one. Now it's flowing through the blue LED because now the input is low, the output is low right there. So what we're gonna do is zoom back again. You can see we got a couple LEDs down here. The blue one's kind of glowing, the red one not so much. The same amount of current is flowing through the two of them. And our blue LEDs are just naturally brighter and there's, there's practically no current. It's very, very little current there. 
blue LEDs just get bright. So now the uh, output enable pin here is floating, so it's making this turn on and off rapidly. So it's not as bright, but it was still pretty bright. So there we go. We gave it a low input now instead of a high, and now the output is off. Doesn't matter what I do here. So that's why I got these LEDs here. You can see we got the positive supply resistor going through an LED and then through that LED make sure the anode, the long lead of the LED is towards the more positive side. But in any case it comes to this other resistor to the negative side of the power supply. So now we're going to zoom in and look over here. You can see we have one more LED but right now at the moment we have the same circuit except for that's a one kilo ohm resistor. Those are both one kilo ohm resistors. That's a 510 ohm resistor, lower value resistor on that side. But in any case, we got resistor LEDs. This extra resistor blocks enough voltage to prevent current from leaking through, enough to get them to glow at all. And uh, so that's why I got two of them there. But in uh, any case, output not doing anything. It, it doesn't affect the LEDs at all. That is the uh, main takeaway. And uh, so it's not connected. It's just like if I remove that jumper for the most part. Now we'll put it back. You can see the red LEDs are lit up. So what it's doing, we have the trim pot more than about halfway. There's a point here. And there's a that point right there. You go a bit lower, it's a full low input. You go up a little bit, it's a full high input. But uh, in any case, it's outputting right now as close to the positive supply as it can. It goes there. That's to the positive supply. So we think a current, we imagine current conventional current going positive to negative so it can't go that way it's already a positive over there so it's going to the LEDs there again remember long lead anode has to be more positive short lead to cathode towards more negative but we have a current path through there through the 510 ohm resistor and now we set it low we have the output low it's connected to ground as good as it can and so it comes here these two are connected ground over there so this is the only path for it to go over there. So conventional current, it would go through the resistor, the LED, and then come up there to ground, right there. So, in any case, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. But just watching as many videos as you can helps out a ton. Thanks to everybody that does that. I will see you in the next video.